Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse, going through the Bible for the fourth time in the last 34 years, and we come to Lamentations chapter 2, verse 19. So get your Bible, open it up to the book of Lamentations, following the book of Jeremiah, written by Jeremiah, lamenting the fact that the people did not listen to the word of God that he preached so faithfully for decades And now the nation is in ruins, and they have been conquered. Judgment from God. God is not mocked, the Bible says. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jeremiah writes, Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him. For the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. So in addition to crying, and God tells them that they should be praying. Verse 20, Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the woman eat their fruit and the children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord. When God warned them, he warned them from the beginning. He said that things are going to get so bad that if they sinned against him and they refused to repent, then the mothers would actually eat their children. Then, of course, they did not believe him. Now they are starving, and they did just that. They ate their children. Imagine that. God said that's what's going to happen. They didn't believe it. (laughs) We'll never do that. Yeah, they did. Sin's depravity sneaks up on us slowly. And over a period of time, you will find your, if you tolerate sin, you will find yourself doing things that you never thought that you could possibly ever do. But man grows in depravity when they refuse to repent and they tolerate sin. It gets a little more depraved and a little more until finally they do, do the unthinkable. 21. The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. In other words, no young men and no young women means no future. They didn't have much of a future at this point, at least not for several decades. 22. Thou hast called, as in a solemn day, my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger none escaped nor remained. Those that I have swaddled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed. God had invited Israel's enemies to a killing party because this was God's wrath and God's judgment. And they forced his holy, righteous, and just hand by refusing to repent. Because if they had repented, God would have forgiven them. And this judgment would not have come. But people tend to forget that God is just. He is a God of justice. He cannot overlook sin. Even though judgment is his strange work, he still does it. They must be punished. Because God's justice demands it. Let's go into chapter 3. I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. God uses his stick to punish and train his people. This is what Jeremiah has witnessed. And this is what he continues to witness. Verse 2. He hath led me and brought me into darkness but not into light. The Israelites walked in darkness, meaning that they walked in sin. And it was their choice too. And God gave them in. God gave them over to their desires. When one walks according to their own flesh, then they are walking contrary to God, and therefore they are walking in darkness. Verse 3, Surely against me, Is he turned? 
He turneth his hand against me all the day. God is never against us, but he is always against our sin. When God punishes us, it's not because he doesn't love us. It's not because he's against us. It's because he loves us. And he's trying to get us to repent. Now, if we don't repent, there comes a point where he gives us over to our sin. And yeah, then his wrath will come upon us. And he indeed, at that point, is against us. Verse 4, my flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. Sin and the resulting wrath of God had taken its physical toll upon Jeremiah and on the whole nation. Five, he hath builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. God gave them worry and God gave them trouble. They could have avoided all that bad if they had stayed in the moral will of God. And even after they got out of the moral will of God, if they would have heeded the word of God that Jeremiah spoke and repented, they could have avoided this bad. But they chose not to listen to God. They chose to reject the word of God in favor of their feel-good preachers who gave them nothing but positive messages. Six, he hath set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. The dark places refers to the grave. The ones who were not dead in Israel felt as if they were dead because life as they knew it was over. Seven, he hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. They're trapped, trapped in the wrath of God, and they cannot escape that just punishment. It's too late. Eight, also when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. God doesn't listen to the prayers of the damned. God does not answer prayers for mercy, which are prayed by those who continually live in sin either. Verse 9, he hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone. He hath made my paths crooked. God loves his people enough to not allow them to avoid the lessons that he wants to teach them, although those lessons are very painful ones. Verse 10, he was unto me as a bear lying in wait and as a lion in secret places. He hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He hath made me desolate. He hath bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. I was a derision to all my people and their song all the day. He hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He hath covered me with ashes, and thou hast removed my soul far from peace. I forgot prosperity, and I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Wormwood in scripture means bitterness. When we sin, then we should remember that we have, we have offended God. Never forget, when you sin, you have offended God. I don't care if you're a Christian or a non-Christian. When you sin, you offend God. That's why as a Christian, you feel terrible. When we sin, then we should think about how bad we are and how good God is. And that realization is the first step in the right direction. 21, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. So the initial shock of God's punishment and the self-pity that went with it seemed to be wearing off somewhat for the prophet. 
and perhaps for the people too, they're starting to think straight. They're starting to understand that as bad as things are, that their sins actually deserve even worse. 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of his compassions. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him, trusting in God's justice and his mercy during suffering, even when it is suffering for our own just punishment, that is a good thing. Continue to trust in God's justice and look forward to his mercy as you repent. 25, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. It is good to hope in God while one is suffering hard times because of their sins. It is even better to learn to obey God while you are young and avoid those sins altogether. 28. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. Sometimes the best thing that we can do in God's presence is to just sit and be quiet. Just be quiet. God cannot talk to us, and we certainly cannot hear him if we are always talking and making noise and around noise. I'm, the older I get, the more I dislike noise. I, I don't like being in noisy places. I, when I drive, I don't like to have the radio on or anything else on a lot of times. I just want to be quiet. I want quiet. When I walk, I've walked for, I don't know, 50 years for exercise every day, almost. And I've, I've never liked noise. I've never liked traffic. When I walk, I like it to be quiet because that's some of my best times with God is when I'm just quiet and walking. And then, you know, you can hear the voice of God. You can, he can talk to your heart through just about anything that you see. Verse 29, he putteth his mouth in the dust if so be there may, may be hope. Putting your mouth in the dust means to humble oneself before God. This is the only chance that anyone has of getting anywhere with God. You must humble yourself before him. 30. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach. Accept bad treatment from others without striking back. And this would be a sign of humility as well. Not getting people back, not retaliating. 31, for the Lord will not cast off forever. God lets his people suffer for their sins. I'm not talking about the unsaved. I'm talking about the saved today. He lets his people suffer for their sins. And if they learn their lesson and then return to him, God will welcome them back into fellowship with him and they will be much better off for having endured it in the correct manner, the biblical manner, by drawing closer to him. And I'm going to stop there for today. If you would like to study the whole Bible with me, you can at thebibleversebyverse.com. I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, this is the fourth series going through the Bible. Well, all four of those series are archived at thebibleversebyverse.com. So you choose the series and then the book of the Bible and then the chapter and then the section and then click and then listen. All you need to bring is your Bible to thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for the Word of God. And also when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, if you would, Go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Let's get out God's word together. It's the most important work that we can do. Give it out straight, the whole counsel of God. Until next time, so long.